Zonstar. I'm too sexy for you. And I'm responding to a video that you had placed to Thought Crime. Understand first that there's absolutely no denying, on my part at least, that the Germans during the Second World War ran concentration camps, that people were imprisoned there, a large number of them Jews, that they were used for labor against their will, and that many of them died. Holocaust denial doesn't necessarily mean that someone says nothing happened, which I believe is what most people would try to get others to believe that Holocaust deniers believe. What I do say is that the Holocaust did not happen to the extent they claimed it happened, that there was not an organized effort to exterminate Jews, nor were there any orders from on high to carry out such activity. Interesting fellow named David Cole. This man did a, a movie on his own, a documentary on his own, and you will find that on YouTube, where he actually went to Auschwitz himself and investigated this quote-unquote death camp. It's ironic that David Cole himself is Jewish, but yet he's a Holocaust revisionist. It's also interesting for me to see that David Cole allegedly renounced his position years later. A site I'll link you to is a history through intimidation. Yet with that put aside, it's still ironic that the facts he uncovered in his investigation remain as facts, whether or not he recanted his position. I'll give you another link to a site, and we're really not going to go through any of the science related to this, but we can, if you'd like. I doubt you will. You know, quite often, history, as it's written, isn't the truth. Just because something is written down does not make it truthful. And I would figure that you, being a, a, an atheist, would understand that just because something's written down doesn't make it the truth, right? And, and history is written by the victors. Good guys versus the bad guys. Good guys win. Well, they're only the good guys because they won. And they're the ones who get to decide what gets written into history. And sure, there were atrocities during the Second World War from both sides. I find it very ironic, though, that atrocities are very one-sided in history. That it's always the other guys that did everything, and, oh, we were the good guys, so we couldn't have done anything wrong, but we're not here to talk about atrocities that were committed by anybody else except the Germans against the Jews. And I like to look at things from more of a common sense standpoint. I'm going to give you a, a link, and yeah, it's a Nazi link. It's still pretty easy to look at. Pictures of the plaques that were located at Auschwitz. You know, it's funny. People will tell you that six million Jews died during the Holocaust. You know, the original plaque at Auschwitz read, quote, four million people suffered and died here at the hands of the Nazi murderers between the years 1940 and 1945. That's four million out of the six million, because there were other camps as well, not just Auschwitz. But remember in 48, the plaque read four million. Well, they revised that plaque in 1990, and the plaque now reads, Forever let this place be a cry of despair and a warning to humanity, where the Nazis murdered about one and a half million men, women, and children, mainly Jews, from various countries of Europe. Auschwitz-Birkenau, 1940 to 1945. But yet, the number six million is still perpetuated. Why is that? 
that is something that needs to be looked at from a common sense approach. That if the number was originally 6 million and 4 million of them were to have died at Auschwitz, but they reduced their number to 1.5 million, shouldn't that 6 million be subsequently reduced to 3.5 million? So why is 6 million still passed on as being the truth? You know, one of the more interesting things, oh, by the way, that was something that David Cole brought up in his presentation. One of the biggest things I found as a point of interest, because I like to look at things from a fair standpoint, in fairness, something that David Cole brought up in his presentation world, that a lot of the buildings there at Auschwitz were, shall we say, remodeled after the fact. Why? Well, to support the story of the Holocaust. If the story of the Holocaust was true, why would they need to change things in those buildings to make them support the story? You know, that alone, Zonstar, is a fabrication of evidence. Can you at least acknowledge that? If the Nazis were so cruel, let's look at this again from a different perspective. Again, not science, and I can go over the science with you if you'd like. The, the Holocaust will not withstand the test of scientific scrutiny. It is impossible for the number that they claim to have been killed and dealt with to have even occurred. But, think of it this way. If the Nazis were such cruel and barbaric animals, why didn't they just dig a hole and shove Jews in it and bury them alive? Why would they even be building gas chambers? Why gas them at all? You know, most Holocaust believers have a position that the Germans gassed and then cremated the Jews. Well, when the uh, camps were liberated, Auschwitz particularly, why were there so many bodies that were piled up? And most people say, oh, there, you know, that proof of the Holocaust, look at all the bodies. But the Germans, being as proficient as they were, you'd at least think that they would gas Jews at about the same rate as they cremated them. You know, after all, dead decaying bodies just laying around make a terrible mess. So you'd think that they would actually have a schedule put together. Okay, today we're going to gas 100,000 of them, and we've got the hole already dug. We're going to gas them, throw them in the hole, done. But don't forget, bodies piled up. Why hadn't they been disposed of? You don't you you would you wouldn't think that they would be cremating them after they would, had already been gassed and piled up. You would think that they would have the crematorium going at the same rate as the gas chamber was going. Well, you know, speaking of these piles of bodies, when people show their proof of the Holocaust and they show these piles of bodies. What they failed to mention is that these people didn't die in any gas chamber. They were the victims of typhus. That's a perfectly good reason for Zyklon B, a pesticide, to be present at these concentration camps, demonstrating that the Germans attempted to save the lives of their prisoners. Because as you know, typhus is easily spread with lice, and Zyklon B is a pesticide used to get rid of lice other myths that are out there, such as the lampshades made from human skin and the, the soap made from human fat, people will still pass that on as if it's the truth. But even Jewish historians say it's not true. Yet those myths still spread as if they're truthful. You know, quite often it's the errors of omission that will propagate the myths. I've seen a video of bulldozers forcing large amounts of dead into big open pits, and people will view that and say to themselves, the evil Germans, when in reality the people running the bulldozers pushing bodies into pits that they have on video, they were British. But people will still set in their mind, in their heads, to blame it on the Germans. I believe it's all by design to create some sort of a psychological exaggeration. Thus, when a horror story gets told, it's easier to attach that single horror story to a six million number. Which, by the way, we already know that six million is fabricated. 
know, when you yourself acknowledge that the Jews are such a small group, why would so much attention be drawn towards this tiny little insignificant group? And that's sarcasm. When larger atrocities were committed, and that's not sarcasm, such as uh, Soviet Christians, over 50 million of them dead in a real holocaust. Can, can you guess who killed them? But yet, quite often I believe that larger atrocities will be brushed aside and completely overlooked and people will be forced to focus on a smaller atrocity, even if they've got to fabricate stuff to make people look at it, just to get somebody to look away from bigger atrocities that really did happen. I hope you take some of that to, to heart and think about it. Have a good day.